It's Yasmin Turnrus here with Fab TV, and we're talking about The Wind with director Emma Tammy and actress Caitlin Gerard. Thank you so much for having us. So, first of all, Emma, congratulations on your directorial debut feature. What attracted you to making this your first movie, having a psychological thriller? Well, um, I I didn't write it. Teresa Sutherland is the is the writer of the script, and uh, she was inspired by actual accounts of women on the on the prairie at that time. And I was really fascinated that she had taken a historical um, thing and it subverted it in such a weird, amazing, fabulous way, um, and got you know taken it into supernatural places at times and horror, and then still kept all of the characters so rooted in just really great drama and multifaceted um ness you know we have a we have a hero in this uh one who's flawed and and amazingly strong and fragile and all the dimensions of i think what it is to be a human being and for um a leading lady to be carrying carrying a film like this with with all that um i just thought was so strong in the script and i was really drawn to it this isn't just a Western horror, but it's actually a feminine Western horror, having it directed by a female and the perspective of a female. And Caitlin, you mentioned that it's never kind of been seen before, the psych of a woman in those days. So what attracted you to the script and your character, Lizzie? Well, when I first read the script, I was immediately excited by the genre because I love Westerns and I loved the mix of imbuing a, a beautiful landscape with its horrific qualities. So that immediately sparked curiosities. And then this character who is in this psychological distress all by herself was immediately something that I just so badly wanted to sink my teeth into. And so going in and auditioning for it, you know, I... The whole time, I just thought, God, how cool would that be? I mean, you, how rare do you ever get that experience to have a character go through such an immense evolution and essentially be in such an isolated state? Those are, are very, very hard narratives to accomplish. And I think that this script explored it in this nonlinear fashion, in this sort of stream of conscious way that was really, really palpable and exciting. And so when we finally got to do it and just sink our teeth into it, it was so thrilling to be able to tell a traditional narrative, mainly a very sort of masculine narrative in this Western world from a feminine perspective. And I think that's just due to the times that we're in. And so we, as storytellers, as female storytellers, now finally have the opportunity to do that. So I think this is just the beginning of sort of refreshing so many new narratives, you know what I mean, with this perspective. And Caitlin, you mentioned that this is your first time working with a female director at this caliber of a movie. Compared to having worked with male directors, what was that experience like? I think that immediately, woman to woman, you can just let down a certain guard. And uh, I think that allowed us to get past a lot of getting to know you, which I think you sort of have to s sort of establish when you're working with the opposite gender and any as an actor partner or as a director. Um, and I think, you know, in the sense of a sisterhood, we sort of knew we were together in this and we also didn't have much time to, sh you know, shake any walls. So we immediately dove in head first and having someone of Emma's nature, which I, you know, the another director that I've worked with who has a similar quality is Gus Van Sant. So the two of them have this deeply calming nature to them. And so when you're on a set, which is very chaotic and very wild and moving at such a fast pace to have a focal point that is so calm and grounded really helps drive everyone in the right direction. And so I would say 
that I don't know if that's necessarily a gender thing because when I was experiencing this with Emma, I was like, oh wow, this is exactly how it was with Gus and um, and getting to experience this with Emma in such an intimate way for such a long period of time just gave me the freedom to really go off the deep end because I was I had this trust in Emma that I knew that she was going to support me and um, you know push me further when I needed to go further and pull me back when I needed to be pulled back and when you have someone that you can rely on like that it gives you an incredible amount of freedom to just get out of your way oh man well I mean Caitlin showed so much gusto straight out the gate and 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 just you know her audition and I think she, she was already like flexing so much range within I think maybe three scenes that you read um and you know we just kind of leapt off the cliff together and I think to be able to do that with someone who was as dedicated as she is um and as a hard I mean her endurance during this schedule and shoot was insane and I think it it's really fitting for the character as well because we see her endure so much and I think uh well, she was just the per- perfect partner for it. But I, I I, actually, you know, it was it was a leap of faith on both of our parts going into it because we hadn't worked together before. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think you can, you know, have a gut feeling about someone and then her talent speaks for it, itself. And I had seen some of her previous work and was really, again, taken by her range and emotional depth. And um, I, I thought that she was going to be able to really nail every facet of Lizzie. And, and she sure did. She sure did. And now finally, this is to both of you. There is a lot of themes within The Wind, such as we've talked about the struggles of a female, childbirth, raising a family during those times, faith versus doubt, as well as the construct of the mind, living within society, away from civilization or a part of it. What do you hope audiences will take away from this film? Good question. I mean, I actually hope that everyone's going to take away something a little different because I think there are so many themes that are part of the fabric of this film um, that that hopefully resonate with people now. Um, For me, one of the biggest ones was the theme of isolation. And I think, um, interestingly enough, living in a world where we are so overly connected right now, I think... um, there's a real theme happening right now of feeling isolated from each other because actual human contact has diminished in some ways, even though we're probably talking to each other on some device or another more than ever before. Um, so I, that one really resonated with me. And I think um, it was such an amazing uh, challenge for, you know, to, to do a film where we're really with one woman, one woman by herself for so much of it. And um, and the fact that that felt so relatable today was fascinating to me and I I think really fun to explore. Yeah, I think, gosh, I do think that I hope that any everyone watching sort of has a different takeaway from it in from one angle or another. I guess I can only speak from my own experience as an audience member watching this, um, but I I was truly taken away by the texture. I don't think many contemporary films take time and the way that Emma shot this and the way that it was the cinematographer worked with the natural light and then the way it was edited together, it's the um, the space that this character is moving through is so expansive and so immersive that, you know, watching this on a big screen really allowed me to get lost in this environment. And I, as an audience member, I just really enjoyed being able to just lose myself in this story and um, and then sort of digesting it afterwards. I would say um, one line that has really stuck with me that Lizzie says at one point, there are two lines. She doesn't say many. So of the seven, uh, they're all important. important, But there are two that I really thought was interesting because she said, and I 
I don't know if I can quote this, but she said, in cities, strangers can be strangers, but here we don't have that luxury. So, you know, I think that does say a lot about what you were saying about the times that we're in, where we are so connected and yet we are so strange to each other and we are so disconnected to um, certain levels of intimacy. And, um, and this environment shows you when you don't have that which she thinks is a luxury, although we may disagree in contemporary times. And then another takeaway that I thought, which is a totally different theme, was when Lizzie says to Emma, played by Julie, Julia Galdini, tell us, she says, please don't be unpleasant in front of the men. And, you know, I think to a degree that there is still some level of women's behavior that tries to attain that and be pleasant and appeasable and you know, having this environment sort of expose that nature. And I do think that our films that we make are always a reflection of what we're experiencing also. And we as women are sort of looking at that as part of our identity. And so I'm just really fascinated with the conversation that that one line sparks. Well, thank you so much for talking to Fab TV. It was a pleasure speaking to both of you, Emma and Caitlin. I'm excited for The Wind coming out April 5th. Yeah, thank you.